Good job, Scott Mav in the building. Now look, you're probably new to this channel, you've probably never seen me before. If you aren't new, it's a different look. The do-rag means that I'm on to something serious, okay? I've never done this before in the channel. I haven't given my thoughts on the Russell Westbrook to the LA Lakers trade yet. But, um, I saw this video from Legend of Winning. Now, I'm going to play the video. I've never seen... I'm a huge YouTube content creator guy. I've never seen any of this guy's content. I saw one tweet by him that said the Lakers are a super team, so I'm suspect on his basketball IQ. Now, here's the thing. I don't bash anybody on this channel, but I do need to correct some people's mindsets because people think, have a different idea of what spacing actually means in basketball. And if you play basketball in real life and not just on 2K, then spacing is different than what it means. And I'll explain that as we go on because I'm sure he's going to say some nonsense about Westbrook not being able to shoot. So, after NBA which is season fair, but with spacing is not exactly led what you, by what you would think it is. dominant performances from both Anthony Davis and LeBron James, the Lakers unfortunately found themselves underperforming by a pretty wide margin by the end of the season. We lost to the defending Western Conference champions, or right now the waning Western Conference champions. You don't think of the Lakers... Because at the end of the I'm season, about to get this, this, I'm wearing a Lakers shirt, but I'm not a huge. I'm not. I'm a LeBron guy. And in I'm not a Lakers fan. Sorry if that makes you upset. Click on this video. Round exit. Now, of course, there are several reasons why this occurred. The biggest one being that both Anthony Davis and LeBron James were dealing with injuries throughout the entire regular season, Fair. and then when the playoffs began, they were not 100%. Mm -hmm. But the second biggest reason why this was the outcome for the Lakers is quite simply that the talent that surrounded both AD and LeBron were not good enough. Which is I disagree with that. First off, off the bat. Now, the talent, the Lakers team talent-wise was the best team in the NBA last season. Talent-wise, they were the best. The fit of all the pieces did not work, and we're gonna we can I'm Why sure he's gonna break that down, but so no talent so around AD and LeBron was fine. The last year. We had, they had enough talent to win a championship. But they, they just were not. The pieces, pieces didn't fit class, in that short period of time. Which brings us to the blockbuster trade that transpired just yesterday, because with a transaction that very few people were expecting. The Washington Wizards. After I was not just expecting this. I thought the Westbrook deal was just sent over smoke one in the air so they could get CP. Westbrook, I did not know they were really going to get Westbrook. Turn, they only received Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, Contavious Codwell Pope. This is the funny part because my friend tried to tell me this too that the Westbrook, that the Lakers threw them a box of trash. Every time the Lakers throw anybody in a trade, is all of a sudden it's a box of trash if they receive anybody that they other people think that is good. It, no matter what, all of a sudden Kuzma's trash. All of a sudden Harold's trash, even though he won six men of the year just a full count a year ago. KCP is trash, where he shot 50% in the NBA Finals a year ago. All right, a first round pick is just trash all of a sudden, our 22nd pick. That's ridiculous. Russell Westbrook does not want to be a Washington Wizard. He wants to be in an LA market. So the fact that we are giving you all of this stuff for a guy that, regardless of what's going to happen, is going to be an LA market anyway. Do not say only before you, you talk about the trade and what the Wizards received. Because they received a good compensation for Russell Westbrook. Now, of course, when you want to talk about giving somebody trash, look at the Rockets trade for James many Harden. People have to and what add. the Nets so, had to give up. Let's which talk that about was the good, nothing. bad, and ugly of the Russell Westbrook trade. First things first, we have good, to bad, acknowledge there's no ugly. the talent Stop. that is Russell Westbrook. Westbrook's impact ranges from scoring, passing, defense, and probably most importantly, controlling the pace of the game. And I do believe a lot of people may not be aware of this, mainly because they don't thoroughly understand how good Westbrook was in the second half of the season last year. In the last 30 games of the regular season, Westbrook averaged nearly 23 points, 13 assists, and nearly 14 rebounds. Of course, many people could argue. <laughs> this dude's averaging 14 rebounds in a month. He's six foot five. 14 rebounds. He's doing the job of two other... 13 assists, 14 rebounds. That means he's doing two other positions' jobs by himself. Get, man, Arjun, if you guys don't understand how incredible Russell Westbrook produced, is, I can't talk but to I you. Do believe it's I really cannot talk basketball with because you. Because if you look at the rest of the roster around LeBron... Because people think the NBA is positionless. It's not. Every position is just getting bigger, but the big men are getting smaller. That's all it is. The NBA is not positionless. Even if you were to combine a lot of those numbers together. Even if you were to combine a lot of those numbers together. Even if you were to combine a lot of those numbers together. So to get that level of play from one player not only adds a layer this, to how dynamic the Lakers could be, but it may be something that this organization desperately needs, especially when LeBron is off the floor. 
Which brings us to the second positive thing about this transaction for the Lakers. Last year, when LeBron was off the floor, the Lakers struggled pretty noticeably to True. keep up some level of offensive of, productivity. Uh, now, some people pattern. may argue that that's so nothing LeBron new, but that has been a pretty consistent theme throughout LeBron's career, and I would agree. However, in the playoffs, in Look particular, at Jay. it hit <laughs> He's historic so lows to how much of a change we saw and what the rest of the roster could produce when LeBron was taking a break. During the regular season when LeBron was on the floor, the Lakers had an offensive rating of 112, but when he was off the court, the offensive rating for the Lakers dropped down to 105. Look at the postseason numbers. That's just and then during the playoffs, the that is shift so ridiculous, is at a historic man. range. When he was on the floor during the playoffs, the offensive rating was roughly 109. But when Le- I don't know what he's going to say next, but really quickly, the Lakers lost in the playoffs because they played multiple big men in positions where they shouldn't have been played. Throughout the whole playoffs, I broke this down in a video that may or may not still be up on my channel. The Lakers wanted to play big man, and they didn't have the big man involved in any action. The big man would stand in the dunker spot, wait for a catch, wait for somebody to draw defense, and that allowed people to collapse the paint on them. That could have been avoided by game plan, not by any personnel, by game plan by Frank Vogel. And nobody wants to put Frank Vogel under the bus, which I like Frank Vogel. Frank Vogel, but they did not Ron game plan for the, the Phoenix Suns series at all. The they did. Waiting for the Lakers Offensively, they did. Seventy-four points one which is ridiculous right, okay. what you need to do at an elite level. It is raising the floor for any team or any situation that he finds himself in. And I do believe that it's something that is desperately needed for So far, this, I mean, he seems like he's stuck in facts. I haven't been able to disagree with too much about what you said. LeBron can not lie to you. at an advanced age because next year he will be 37 years old. So, again, Man. having someone like Russell Westbrook. Well, can, we st- can we talk about LeBron's decline when it actually happens? And stop trying to predict it, please. To aid this offense while for LeBron first, is for taking a break. Is something that is a noticeable. His players are different. I do believe it's probably the greatest attribute to adding Russell Westbrook to this team. However, those are really the only two positives that I can think about when it comes to Westbrook on the Lakers. <laughs> only only now, two positives. I, I would like love to hear his obvious negatives. flaws with this transaction. I do want to acknowledge some of the other negatives first because I do believe there's so many things that people are overlooking. And the and fact it, that he called them a super team when they had like six guys on their roster is just absolutely scary. unbelievable. First, it's unbelievable how many people like implications of and adding send Russell positive Westbrook feedback to, to Twitter because comments. Now, the Los Angeles Lakers have committed north of $120 million to you between so the three you. star welcome. players. One of which is injury riddled in Anthony Davis. The other one will be 37 years old by the end of this upcoming season in LeBron James. And the last one in Russell Westbrook is grossly overpaid. The payroll which basically situation the is a concern a to me. And I do agree with this. Now, the payroll is, is way, way too much. You put roster, yourself in a situation where you're really relying on veterans to, to be accustomed to the rest of the stars on the when you team. sign those vet minimums. But even if you want to be optimistic that Russell Westbrook will somehow figure it out, which I doubt, you still have to acknowledge how to the me? rest of the stars on the team. But even if you want to be optimistic that Russell Westbrook will somehow figure it out, which I doubt. I want you to go back and look besides Kevin Durant and tell me any other teammate that's had any problems with Russell Westbrook. The rest of the roster is going to be built. Adding someone like Carmelo Anthony or Trevor Ariza more than likely won't be enough to fill out the rest of the roster yes, with it will. quality rotation. <laughs> yes, it will. Secondly, this whole logic that the Lakers should have gone after someone like Russell Westbrook or another ball handler because when LeBron goes off the floor, then the offense just collapsed is completely exaggerated. Yes, that did happen this last season, and it certainly it is a little happened in the playoffs. But honestly, I'm so confused to why we hold that much credibility into that argument when we all know that LeBron nor Anthony Davis were 100% healthy. And when they are both healthy, Fair. similar to the 2020 hey, I'm not. One, he's making good when points. LeBron was on the floor, a little the inaccuracies, but he's making good points. When he was and yes, I can say floor, inaccuracies. Lakers I'm a skills development of trainer. Nine. Don't yes, mess with my pedigree. Yes, there is a dip in productivity, but it's certainly controllable. That's why so nobody wants to comment on my post because they're scared of me. claim that I have to commit north of 40 plus million dollars to another hey, ball Rob. handler on my roster when I more than likely can find other quality ball handlers around the league that can provide other things that I desperately need that Westbrook just doesn't do. Which brings me to my last point before I go on to the disgustingly bad negative aspects of... 
I would love to hear the disgusting bad news about Westbrook Westbrook to the Lakers. Of Legend of, that is, Legend of the Lakers actually had the opportunity to acquire a quality three-point shooter in Buddy Heald and didn't really have to lose anything in the process. True. Now, no, I am not saying that Buddy Heald as a player is better than Russell Westbrook. But what I am saying is that Buddy Heald, based off of what he provides, which is elite three-point shooting, and he does it at an extremely high volume and at a high efficiency rate, that fit on a team that needs more three-point shooting is just as valuable, if not more valuable, than whatever you might get out of Russell Westbrook. Because in my Let opinion, me st- I would- Ooh, I slammed the thing so hard it played after I paused it, because that is ridiculous. Here's my point. If you guys want to know the whole basis of this whole video, here's this right here. Because I hear this. Okay, first of all, shout out to the Lakers Nation front office show and the front office show YouTube channel. Go check out those places. They're, they're new. Uh, Trevor Lane runs it. It's a guy that I've been messaging forever, <laughs> DMing him. Just tell him to ask me to get on one of his shows. Whatever, Trevor, I appreciate your show. But this is an issue with what I, I hear from him and some other people that he has on his show. Um, the issue that DeMar DeRozan... We'll talk about Westbrook later. That DeMar DeRozan cannot shoot the basketball. Let me give you this example for kids out there and for people who are childish basketball minds and think that 2K is real life. Let me give you an example. Um, Let me put DeMar DeRozan in the corner, right? And let me let LeBron James drive and kick to him seven times. Okay? Seven times he's going to drive and kick to DeMar DeRozan. Now hear me out. The first time... Say DeMar DeRozan is, is, is trash. He's a trash shooter. He's a 20% three-point shooter. We'll just say that. 20%, which is lower than it actually is, but 20% sure. Kick it to DeMar DeRozan. Drive and kick. Three-point shot break. Okay, 0 for 1. Next possession. Drive and kick to DeMar DeRozan. He's going to drive, eat up the space that you give him because he just missed a shot, get two free throws. Maybe an M1. We'll say an M1 because he's athletic. Three-point play. That's three points. So far, you're 1 for 2. Next possession. Now, because you've driven and you've eaten up that space, the defender is now closer on him. Even though DeMar DeRozan can't shoot, now he's got a defender hanging up on him because he blew past him. Next, the defender's too tight on him, drive and kick LeBron. Instead, this time it's a backdoor cut, dunk. He's now got five points and three possessions for a non-shooter. Fourth possession, drive and kick to Russell, or to DeMar DeRozan. Russell Westbrook does not matter. Any of these guys that you think cannot shoot, Rajon Rondo, whatever. These guys are adept. I'm not even going to explain the rest of the possessions. Seven possessions out. Explain. He can go four for seven and not even have to make a three and still be an incredibly impactful player. Buddy Heel, driving kick to the corner. One, three, boom. Second opportunity, the other person's hanging up or is hanging out on Buddy Heel, not letting him get any touches. That's it. So now he's just atmosphere. So you want a player that's just atmosphere on the court? Or do you want a player that's dynamic and a playmaker? Spacing is not about three-point shooting. And that's the that is the three-point shooting is to get the attention away from the driving ability. Okay? Anthony Davis is a terrible three-point shooter. But for a big man, he's elite because he can make a couple threes, which open up everything else for him. But Anthony Davis is never going to be a 10 three-point attempt shooter. That makes four makes a game. No. And can we stop this three point percentage? Oh, he shot 50% from three. Can we start to actually put in the volume of shots? Because I would take people told me that Gary Trent Jr. is a bad shooter. Gary Trent Jr., who shoots a bound league at league around league average in 37% free three point shooting and shoots about 10 three pointers a game, as opposed to a guy like Caruso, who everybody loves. I love Caruso. Congratulations on his deal to Chicago, who shoots. About one and a half threes a game and 45% shooting. And people are saying Caruso is a better shooter than Gary Trent. You don't know basketball. Stop with this. Stop. Three-point shooting is not what creates spacing. Spacing is created by playmakers. And big men are starting to die. Not because big men can't shoot threes. It's because the big men who are thriving are the big men who can put the ball on the floor. Does Bam shoot threes? No. Is Bam dominant? Yes. Nikola Jokic, he can shoot threes, but he's dominant. Joel Embiid does not need to. He can dominate again without shooting threes because he can handle the ball. It's not about shooting the ball. It's about playmaking. That is spacing. I don't know what this dude is on. Maybe he plays way too much 2K. I play a lot of 2K, but I play real basketball. This is not what spacing is. I would honestly attempt to maximize the 36 minutes of action that I'm going to get out of LeBron James rather than attempting to increase the productivity of the offense in the 12 minutes that he's going to go off the floor. Get this out. I'm done. I'm starting to get irritated with First this video. First is a really hard fit, especially when both of them have inconsistent shots, and that statement definitely holds true to Russell. 
to Westbrook. Now, for the people out there who want to point out, well, LeBron and Kyrie, they played together, and that worked out fine, and even Wade and LeBron played together. And yeah, why are we forgetting that the Wade and LeBron played together with no space? The first year, they played with very little to no spacing on the floor, and they went to the NBA Finals. Everybody wants to point to LeBron dying in the Finals and not doing anything. Sure, I'd never defend him for that. That's not the point. D. Wade and LeBron coexisted because there's more to basketball than shooting threes. Whoa! Mind, mind blown. I mean, it's crazy, Wait, huh? the greatest floor spaces, so how did that work Look at out? the Suns this year. Here's the they, thing. Won, they got you're to the finals right. by just but shooting also, a lot of threes. Here's the other part of that formula that you are purposefully ignoring, and you're having this conversation in bad faith. Anyone bad faith. who watched LeBron and Wade this, play together, they knew for a fact the reason why that worked is because Chris Bosh was willing to take on. That is not true. That is not true at all. Go watch Game 6 against Indiana in 2012. Did Chris Bosh do anything in that game? A game where you are up against the... People don't even want to talk about that game where D-Wade had 41, started out the series trash, took the series over. Did Chris Bosh do anything? No, Chris Bosh had a back injury. Chris Bosh did not get them past Indiana. Go back and watch that series. I'm a basketball historian. You can't throw out nonsense like that. Chris Bosh did not. Role. He helped Same the spacing for Miami, yes. Love. But he is Both not the love. reason. Same with Kevin Love. Kevin Love had a concussion in Game 5 in the NBA Finals when Kyrie and LeBron put on that 41 point. You don't need his spacing. They had Tristan Thompson running around out there getting offensive rebounds. You don't need three point. No, stop it. Stop it. Kevin Love averaged like eight. I love Kevin Love. He averaged eight in the Finals. Get that out of here. Spacing to two players no, I'm skipping this nonsense. from three was a noticeable increase from a lot of other power forwards at that time. But more importantly, producing Anthony Davis to just be a floor spacer would not- <laughs> They're playing 2K. They're just playing 2K. Anthony Davis does not have to stand in the corner when Westbrook plays. You Can you imagine a Westbrook Anthony Davis pick and roll? Westbrook has gotten Steven Adams paid. Westbrook has gotten Ennis Cantor paid. He has gotten these centers who have very little mobility paid because he can give them shots right at the basket. Anthony Davis, it makes a living off of tough shots. Give him 12 easy baskets. He's averaging 30 with Russell Westbrook. Next year, I would not be surprised if Anthony Davis averages 30 points a game. And you guys, oh, the, he's going to be out there shooting threes. He don't even need to shoot no threes. He's got Westbrook on his team and LeBron, the biggest two attention-getting players in the league when they're driving to the rim. Oh, what, are here? what are we doing here? What are we doing? This is the people that you guys are subscribed to. Also Let's stop. More Can we stop? Good to the overall offense I'm done with this video. That's my point. Um, Do Rag Mav is a different breed. I'm sorry if I got a little too animated with this, but I'm not watching the rest of this video. This guy is, I don't know if any, if all of what he says is just like this, but no. If you want to hear some real basketball, you better subscribe and you better like this video. Sky Mav out.